Okay, here we go. The parts we need to put the extruder assembly together are, first of all, a stepper motor. There is a drive a toothed wheel here, the drive wheel. Um, and then these parts allow you to release the tension or uh, when you uh, install and remove the remove filament from the system. Uh, I've got a base plate here that mounts to the stepper motor and then holds everything to the frame of the 3D printer. Uh, this wheel is a guide wheel for the filament. It's going to flow through here. Uh, I've got a spring uh, that keeps tension on uh, these pieces, which keeps the filament pressed tightly against the wheel. So the filament is going to come up between this wheel and the toothed wheel. And that spring keeps this pushed against here so that the toothed wheel can grab a hold of the filament. Um, and this is a guide for the filament. And this is the, the Bowden tube, or Bowden tube, I'm not sure which is it's called. So starting uh, step is to put the toothed wheel onto the stepper motor. Notice the stepper motor has a flat. This slides on right here. And the, uh, the set screw right here is going to line up with that flat. The instructions say this needs to be about three millimeters. Uh, it's not really critical that distance, <coughs> looking at the other machine. Um, over time, I think this wheel possibly can wear down a little bit, so there's room to move this uh, in and out to get onto a fresh set of teeth if, you're, if the drive wheel starts to slide. I'm just going to use the back plate here, and I'm just going to slide that up so that it's about that far away here, and then I'm going to take my... Oops, wrong one. Uh, take my ball driver and tighten that on here. And again, you don't have to have to really torque down on it. Just have to get it, just get it, you know, tight, um, just like so. Okay. Next step is you're going to take um, this. This is the bearing holder here, and this is going to go here, and it's going to require. A screw to go through here and tighten it down. So I'm going to shut that off, shut off the camera while I find that next piece. Okay, once again, I've got entropy in the shop firmly grabbing me by the throat, but I've found all the parts that I need. I'm going to need these two washers right here. These are parts C9, uh, and you're going to need this bearing, and then you're going to also need this um, M4 by 12 millimeter screw, uh, button head screw, and that's going to hold everything together. So get that out. I had to kind of dig around to find everything. Things are kind of scattered all over the shop after a month of not working on the machine. All right, so what's going to happen here is that we're going to line up, I'm going to take this button head screw and we're going to put it in through here and then a little washer. You can't really see how I'm putting it in. You kind of have to just work it in here and get it to line up and put the washer on. Just gonna set that down for a second. And then the second washer, I'm gonna just balance it on top of the bearing like so. I use my Allen wrench to just get it lined up and then slip it in here. Gently, gently. Okay, again, this is one another one of those steps. It's a whole lot easier to do if I'm not trying to keep everything straightened out on camera. Um, we're going to do this here. All right. So maybe if I put this on here and then hang that over there like so and this like so. I've got all these pieces lined up and then I can slide them in here. And I'll tell you and jittery today. Okay, so I've got the... Come on. Hmm. There's got to be a better way to do this, but I don't know what it is. Just slide that in here. And I'm just going to push my Allen wrench through here, and hopefully I've hooked the washers and the screws. Yeah, how about that? So you can see here I've got a washer and the pulley and the other washer here lined up. And then I'm just going to lay this all sideways here. Um, and I'm seeing here that this is the unthreaded side, so the bolt's actually going to go through there. 
So I'm just going to pull that out. And then take that button head bolt or screw, I guess. So the difference, I guess, between a nut and a bolt, well, actually, I was going to say, I was going to make a comment on the difference between a nut or a screw and a bolt, but a screw generally goes into something that's already threaded, whereas a bolt actually requires a nut, and because this goes into a fitting that's already threaded on this side, I guess we're going to refer to this as a screw. Um, of course, generically, when you buy them, they're called screws, whether they are going to be used as bolts or used as nuts, and kind of just depends on the configuration. Okay, so anyway, I've got that part in here. Well, that's made up. And uh, I'm going to find some more pieces here. One of the things that's a little frustrating about building this kit, or at least describing the construction of this kit, is that they don't give these a lot of these parts a name. So, uh, <laughs> I'm going to call this the base plate. I don't know what it's really called, but um, well, I don't know. Is a name here on here? I'm kind of looking at the instructions here to see if there's some kind of a name, but there really isn't. But anyway, what happens is we've got the extruder motor here. This motor is going to push the filament through the printer. Um, and then this bracket is going to hold the motor onto the frame of the 3D printer. And then I'm going to call this the top guide. Uh, what happens, it's got a hole right here and the filament is going to go through this hole and then into this guide that holds the holds the Bowden tube. And I'll put that on in a minute. Um, the whole thing fixes together. I'm going to put these the screws through here. These are, uh, I'm not sure what these are. These are um, these are M3 by 16 millimeter screws, uh, and they, they just it goes through this top guide and into the mounting bracket, and then from there into the actual motor. So just put those right here, and I'm just going to loosely fit everything here until I get it all assembled, and then I'll go back and and snug everything down here. Um, the bottom this is the bottom guide for the uh, filament, and it's actually movable. Uh, and what happens is that spring tension, you can see how this moves here, spring tension is going to push this down and sandwich the filament in between this guide wheel and this toothed uh, pulley here. Uh, and I've noticed on the other machine that slowly but surely the teeth in this get filled with um, little bits of PLA or, or whatever filament you're using, whether you use PLA or ABS. And you have to kind of peel that out of there every once in a while. So uh, you may have to take this apart uh, periodically, and you can kind of turn this around and get to the set screw, and you can take that off and clean the crud off of it if you need to. I haven't actually done it yet. It hasn't actually been slipping, uh, at least not problematically. It does slip occasionally, and when we talk about machine setup, I'll talk about why and when it slips and whether or not you need to worry about it. This little bushing, it's going to slide on that bushing, so that drops in here. And then this other 16 millimeter M4 screw goes in here. Um, and again, it, it threads through that bracket uh, and into thing. And again, this, this then needs to be free to move. Then this spring, um, oh, I forgot a step. I'm sorry. Um, what we need to do is I need to find one more screw. It's calling for C6. I'm going to shut off the camera while I find that. Okay, once again, entropy really just uh, really <laughs> creating a frustration here in the shop. I left this project alone for a month and things kind of got scrambled around. And so I've kind of got everything I'll show you here. I've kind of got everything laid out so that I can, can see where everything is. And everything's kind of laid out so I could try to find it. But uh, best laid plans of mice and men and all that kind of thing. Best laid plans of mice and men off gang aglay. I think that's how they say it. Robert Burns said that. All right, so anyway, I've got the parts and pieces that I need here. Um, so this is a, this is a, uh, what is this? An eight millimeter long uh, M, M4, I think it's an M4 screw. Anyway, uh, it's gonna go in here and all this is is the head of this screw is to catch the end of the compression string spring. So I'm just going to put that on the end of my ball driver. Yeah. Okay, again, this is one of those things where it's a whole heck of a lot easier to do this. If I'm not trying to do it on camera, 
Um, trying to keep things in the light, lots of shadows and stuff in my shop, and I can work around those really well if I'm not trying to video. I can see why people that make a lot of videos spend a ton of money on lights, and uh, I don't know how to deal with that. All right, so I've got that in there. That's just going to capture this spring. It's going to slide on here, and that's just to keep it from wiggling around. So you don't have to really tighten that down very tightly. Uh, it just has to be in there to hold. And then uh, we're going to do the same thing on the bottom here. But first, we'll put this in place. And what this does here, this keeps the tension on the on the filament. And you squeeze these together and that releases the tension and then it, the spring pushes it out here. So to get the spring on, it just needs to go in here and then kind of kind of snaps in and it's kind of threatening to fly up in my face here but push it in here and then on the other side this uh, screw just goes through here and all that is to do is to keep that spring in place. Um, I, I kind of think it might be better to actually put that screw in the other way so that the head of this captures that spring and it's not so free to wiggle around but um, that would be a little more difficult to do. That's not the way they want you to do it in the instructions. I am going to follow the instructions here. So that's in, that's in. Uh, and I'm going to go back and tighten all these down. And there you have, just like that, you've got the extruder assembly and we're ready to mount that. Um, as you put it together, the, the filament is going to sit underneath the machine. Uh, so it's, the filament's going to come up this way and then it's going to come out the top and this little fitting just screws right into the top here. I think these are air pressure fittings, um, but uh, they don't have to actually have to hold any pressure. They've got little teeth here. Um, I've seen these uh, for airbrush setups and so forth. Uh, I don't know what else they're used for, but uh, they don't actually need to be airtight. I mean, you don't really need to have it tightened, although if you wanted to put a wrench on there and snug it up, um, that would be fine. There is nothing in the operation of the machine that allows these to turn or twist or, or puts any force on them. So it's not going to move around. So I just made it, I'm just making it finger tight and set it like that. I'm looking at my uh, camera here. I'm running out of batteries. So the extruder here is completed. And I'm going to call this video done. And I'll do some editing and try to get that posted. And try to figure out how to post these a little more efficiently. It kind of shuts my whole computer down when I'm posting the videos. So what I'm going to do, or try to do, is get the next, these next several videos all made uh, and then set them to upload overnight. Uh, I hope you found this helpful, uh, useful, entertaining, um, uh, amusing, and if, if you're not laughing with me, then maybe you're laughing at me. But either way, as long as you're entertained, I guess I'm happy. Uh, Catch you later. Thanks for watching.